Hi, this is Rick Patterson with the Handyman Toolbox. Thanks for coming to my video today. Just real quickly, we're going to uh, run through a test. I've got a, a light switch that is not working and the light to the outside on the deck is not coming on. So uh, I'm going to kind of walk you through um, how to find out what the problem is or in other words, troubleshoot a light switch. Now again, anytime that you're working with electricity, you've got to show respect to it. Always assume that the wires are, are um, hot. Now, what I have here is I have two black wires going through. Ordinarily, on any given switch, you would have a white wire and a black wire. But in this case, um, the electrician, the original electrical work was with two wires. So the white wires in the back are all tied together and that's the wire right there and so uh, what I've done is uh, just take off the caps off these wires like so and do an inspection to make sure that all of the wiring is um, on there correctly and that they're tight once that's done then you go back in twist that back really, really good, and then you're good to go. Now, one thing that I do as an electrician, I go back behind and make sure that I'm the last one in the box. So to prove that is I will wrap all of the wiring closed with electrical tape. That way I know that I'm the last one in, okay? So once I inspect that, then I go here to the black one. I've already inspected that one and all the connections are good. And now I'm just gonna wrap some electrical tape on it as well and do the same thing. It serves two purposes. One is just to uh, kind of get my mark in the box, but two is to ensure that there's no electrical wiring uh, touching outside of cap. Sometimes wires are cut too long. All right, so the only cause that can happen here is once that I've done my testing, and what I'll do here is just to kind of prove this, Let's see if you can get a hold of this. This is my uh, ohmmeter, and what I've done here is put this on 200. Let me kind of show you what that looks like. I've placed the dial here to 200, and then I have a common which is my black and then I have the red cord going to the V for voltage red versus amps or ohms okay now I'm going to carefully touch this here and let's see if I can go boot do both of these at the same time hopefully we do the same there and this is live and I'm doing this for a test I do not recommend that you do this on your own and so I'm doing this just for the video sake and it's showing the 121 so the connections are good except when I go outside then I have a problem let's go outside and take a look at this and do the same test there okay as you can see here I've already taken the light away from the house and this deck light on the back porch is not working so um, we've already tested with a with the light bulb it's not working at all and now what I've done here is just taking the caps off. Again, when you're working with electricity, make sure that everybody uh, understands in the household not to touch switches, not to touch anything in the panel or anything like that. And you're the only person that will do that. So, again, what I'm going to do here is uh, take my voltmeter, turn it on to 200. I'm going to take the probes and I'm going to touch here and I'm going to touch here on either side and I have nothing showing whatsoever. It's, it's completely dead and, and the only reason I would touch it because I know it's dead and I kind of want to prove it. Uh, if it was on I'd be doing the happy dance for you uh, right now and I'd probably get a, a million hits. <laughs> 
<laughs> but in this case it's not. One other good thing that I like to do, this is called what I call a sniffer. It's actually a voltmeter and it's a voltage detector. And as you can see right here, it uh, has a particular edge to it. I turn it on at the side. This takes about a, uh, a 3A battery, a AA battery. And so um, every once in a while it'll tweet. I don't know if I can get it to tweet or not for you. But just to prove this, if I was to hold this up and it had uh, any voltage in it, what would happen was it would tweet. And there's no voltage, no power here at all. So I know the line's completely uh, dead. Now, this is not my problem. This is not, um, so I know that, you know, that, that the current goes here uh, if it's on. So we're going we're gonna to replace the switch. That's what it tells me. All the connections are good. Uh, so the only thing to do now is to replace the switch. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, the first thing you want to do when working with any electricity is make sure that the power source at the box is turned off completely. That way there's no danger of any shock or any hazardous uh, operations to get you hurt. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and open up the box. And you see the box, or they call this the panel. And I've already located where this is going to be. So I'm going to turn off the kitchen lights and the deck and do the same thing for the receptacles because I do not want any uh, hazard whatsoever to be shot. Once you've done this, go ahead and close the box. If you're working uh, in a house where there are other people around, make sure that you close this. Sometimes I will even do this. I will put a piece of I will put a piece of tape, electrical tape, over the door, over the handle. That way, anybody that comes along says, hey, you know, the light's off in the house, let me go turn it on, and not be aware of that. The, uh, you know, that way I don't get hurt uh, working on it, and neither would you. The other thing important to do is let everybody in the household know what you're doing. If there's small children in the room, make sure, or in the house, make sure that they are uh, supervised and are away from the electrical lines that you're working on and especially that you let everybody know that this is a no-touch zone okay so now let's go on okay what I'm going to do first off is um, work with this particular uh, piece right here and instead of doing everything fancy and whatnot I'm going to go ahead and clip this and just to make it really quick clip everything off with my cutters and this is a, a special tool that we use. It's called strippers. And so I'm going to lay this aside now and uh, where I don't use this again. And what you do on these is you take your stripper and then you just pull back about a quarter of an inch wiring like so and do this on both ends. And because I'm so very, very cautious, I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to go ahead and get my tester out and make sure before I start stripping any of these wires and so there's no tweets uh, whatsoever. So I just double check all those just to make sure because I'd rather be safe. You know the old adage, you'd rather be safe than sorry. Well that's in this case that is a sure thing. You can recuperate from a a leaky faucet is pretty quick, but it's kind of hard to recuperate from a shock. So what I've done here is made my initial twist for the ground wire. And if you see this here, uh, the new switch is uh, it's marked clearly at the top. So I'm going to make sure that when I put this back in, that the on position is at the top and the off position is at the bottom and what I do here is go ahead I've already done this particular uh, curb and pinch the wire with my stripper that way it stays on there completely like so and then I use my Phillips to go ahead and ground this wire take it all the way in and by the way, you want your turn, the little curve that I made, you want that curve 
to go inside or with the turn. If you have it turned counterclockwise, when you do it, it's just going to come out. So that's how I do there. Then what I do here is this is designed to go straight in, and I'm going to go ahead and push this straight in like so. There's two little holes, and I'm going to do the same thing there. It's called a quick connect, and I've done that there. What I like to do, though, is a couple of extra things. I do not leave these screws open. Some electricians will. I want to make sure everything's snug, and so that way I don't have any problem about things touching inside the box. Then, remember I talked earlier about my mark? Well, what I like to do also is just take some electrical tape and cover the connections like so. Make sure that none of the um, quick connects, ha you, that you have any of the wire hanging out. You don't want that. Uh, nothing exposed. That's why you only do about a quarter of an inch cut. So now I'm ready to put everything back in the box. But before I go to all that, what I'm going to do is go back downstairs, turn the power back on at the box, and then uh, test everything to make sure everything's working and that it was the switch indeed. Okay, so what I've done here is just gone ahead inside and replaced the switch to make sure that it works. It does work. Turn the power back off. And now I'm ready to go ahead and reinstall the light back on to the porch. Again, what you want to do is do not handle the wires whatsoever. Okay, don't touch the ends of them. Take your, the wire nuts, twist them straight on. Okay, make sure everything's attached as it should be. Now there's a ground out here, a ground wire here, but it's already grounded inside, and so uh, I'm just going to let that suffice. And what I do here now, again, I'm going to, especially this is an outside, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap these right here. Just one time, what this does, it lets me know that if I'm ever back out here, I'm the last one to do this, because there's not too many people that uh, wrap uh, their connections. So, it's just back in here. Take this like so. Mount the screws and everything back up inside. And I've got to feed the wire nuts through the casing. Got that done. And I'm ready to go ahead and put the bolt the nuts to the bolt back on. And I take that, just start it. I know this is interesting to see the back of my bald head <laughs> while I'm doing this, but that's how we do it. Screw that all the way in, do the same thing. And this is just a little black nut that I'm using. It's a decorative nut. And I'm done here. I'm going to show you just a little bit something different from a different angle. Okay, what I'm going to use here is some uh, caulk. Some people use clear. Um, I didn't have any. I'm just going to use white. And I'm going to caulk the very top and the sides of this particular piece here. Take that right there. And just run a bead of caulk pretty heavy all the way down. Now, I don't have to go all the way around it because water will drip off at this point right here. I'm going to do this on the other side as well. And stop halfway. Kind of make it look nice and neat. Make sure that there you go. So we're finished now. Thanks for listening. This is Rick Patterson with the Handyman Toolbox. See you next time.
By the way, before you go, I want to encourage you to check out my other videos. And you'll see a link below. Click on it. The 1,000th person that subscribes to thehandymantoolbox.com gets a free tool. Go ahead and register now. See you there.